Um, as far as for our deployment and use of it, um, we're actually using it to replace a, a lot of our internet connections at a lot of our transmitter sites um, because of the cost advantage, first of all, um, the, re, the availability because you're not uh, geo-linked to a location and the multiple redundant uh, uh, entry points for the satellite system. Um, and the other thing is, is we've ran it through some pretty harsh testing as far as we've had some, we've been doing it now, I think for what, two years now, I think we've had access to it. So we've ran it through some pretty bad monsoon rainstorms. We've ran it through some extremely heavy, long duration snowstorms. Um, and we've not had any issues with it. So I mean, overall success rate with it has been absolutely insane. Um, so, I mean, that's basically what we're doing is we're basically replacing any of our, uh, our broadband links. And then at our studio locations that we've put them in, we're using it as a redundant uh, uh, internet connection, um, yes. which has served us well in St. Cloud one time, especially. Are you um, are you comfortable or can you say anything about the speeds? Now, this isn't an official quote, everybody. This is just anecdotal information. But can you say anything about the speeds that you've seen with it? Um, or is that, yeah, I, is, yeah, I mean. Well, don't give uh, the exact number, but just say maybe faster than this or maybe just got to be general. It could be, it could be this. Well, it. It's hard to really compare it because it's it's it really the only thing that's going to go toe to toe with it is true fiber. I mean, really, that's the only thing that's going to go toe to toe with it. I mean, when you're talking DSL, cable modem, any of these other services, they're woefully uh, uh, behind as far as speeds, um, along with the recently disclosed uh, beta test speed of one point three gigabits um that's been pushed down so i mean it it the speeds are incredible and once they get the uh laser linking uh talking from satellite to satellite with lasers it'll be even faster so i mean the technology's there so is it a wave-based technology that the antennas how does it, yes how how does it from a high level how does it work but don't get too far down the weeds because I'm not going to understand it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, with, with it just being as simple as is that the antenna isn't like your traditional satellite design uh, where it uses kind of a concave surface and a single point. Um, it's a flat surface and it uses what's called the phased array antenna, which is like what you would see on uh, the newer uh, uh, weather radars or military aircraft, their radars. Um, and instead of using concave surfaces and focusing and moving the whole aperture to a single point. The dish itself can be flat, but the antennas, and, and we're keeping it high level here, there's a lot more to it, but the little antennas on the uh, dish itself can electronically orientate themselves in the direction needed for the best gain. So is it pointed at a specific satellite or does it go from satellite to satellite to satellite as you use it over time? How does that work? Yep, it, track, it tracks the bird and can bounce from satellite to satellite. So as so like if you see behind me is a current map of the uh, uh, satellites right now that are orbiting North America and stuff and Starlink constellations and stuff. They just launched a bunch more. Um, the satellites go over and they're always continuously moving, but the dish will automatically acquire the next set of satellites. So there's not a disruption in service. Kind of so like, you don't you don't know you've changed satellites. Oh, you like with the cell towers, kind of. Yeah, it it's the concept of cell towers, but it's a little bit more smooth, I guess would be to put it. You know, like when you snap between a cell phone tower you can kind of get that little drop out and then come right back. And I mean, we're so conditioned to where you probably don't notice it as much as you used to. Um, but there's that little kind of drop out and come back in or that kind of sound of the signal kind of just washing out, but coming back in quick. 
um, that doesn't happen the way that they've got their back end built because the infrastructure knows where the next bird's going to be, both in timing and in its catalog, and it knows where to be looking for that. So as one bird's leaving, it's grabbing onto the next best bird for your area <laughs> and bringing all that data across and everything else. So you don't really, it's not like you see a bump drop out and then come back in. You can continuously download like an ISO image and you've probably crossed, you know, maybe two birds. It depends upon how big of an image you're downloading. But I mean, I think like one of the biggest images that I downloaded was like an eight gig backup and it was steady. I mean, it was smooth. Honestly, that's insane. I mean, I have trouble getting the toilet paper to face the right direction and change the roll. <laughs> I can't. This is... <laughs>